as an example of modification of a property of a composite material due to addition of reinforcement, let us consider Young's modulus of a composite material. Young's modulus particularly for example, we look, looked at uh, you know, polymer matrix composite if the glass fiber reinforced uh, plastic GFRP. So, in this the uh, polymer itself has very low stiffness, very low Young's modulus but glass has higher stiffness. So, when glass is added the stiffness of the composite the Young's modulus of the composite increases. Two standard uh, models are used for calculation of the Young's modulus. One is the isostrain modulus and another is isostress modulus. We will look at both of them. Let us look at for the iso, isostrain modulus Mm, a good model is of continuous aligned fiber composite. So, in this sketch I have shown a sketch of uh, continuously aligned glass fiber composite. So, the polymer is of uh, shown as a block of length L and the fibers are also of length L running from the left end of the composite to the right end. So, these fibers are of the reinforcing phase. So, they have a different modulus, the modulus is E f whereas, the modulus of the matrix is E m. Also, the volume fraction of the two phases is important in uh, determining the modulus of the final composite and the volume fraction of fiber let us call that V f or much more simply, simply as let me denote it as f. The volume fraction of uh, the matrix is V m which will obviously be 1 minus f because there are only two phases. So, the volume fraction of matrix is 1 minus the volume fraction of fiber. On the cross sectional area a part of the area is taken by part of the area is taken by the fiber these areas are taken by the fiber. whereas, rest of the area is taken by the polymer, the rest of the area is the polymer area. So, we can if we so wish separately denote the area of the fiber as A f and the area of the matrix as A m. So, the overall area of the composite A c will be sum of these two areas. Now, let us look at what we mean by this isostrain loading. So, for such a composite if I if I put a load if I put a load F c on this composite material then this load will be distributed on the fiber and in the matrix. Let us say that in the fiber the force is F f that is the sum of uh, not, not on just this fiber by F f I mean the sum of the forces and acting on the entire um, cross section given by the fiber and similarly on the ma on the matrix there is a force F m. So, obviously, this F c will be the sum of these two forces. So, the total force on the composite is sum of the force on fiber plus the force on matrix. Now, let us look at due to this force what extension the composite undergoes. So, let us say that there is an extension
extension delta L due to this force, the original length of the composite was L. So, you can also see here that the original original length of the composite L c is same as the original length of the matrix and the length of the fiber all of these are same and so we are designating all these equal lengths by L. Similarly, if there is no debonding between the fiber and the matrix the fiber will also extend by the amount delta L and the matrix will also extend by amount delta L. So, the change in length change in length delta L in the composite changing length of the matrix and changing length of the fiber all these quantities also are same and let us call them that as delta L. So, this of course, leads to equality of a strain in in all these phases. So, a strain in the composite is equal to the strain in the matrix is equal to strain in the fiber all of which is equal to changing length delta L divided by original length. So, let us call all these strains as by a single symbol epsilon. So, this is the reason why we are calling this loading as an iso strain loading. So, this results in an iso strain loading. So, for this iso strain loading we have seen let us begin with the force we saw that the force on the composite was sum of the force acting on the matrix cross section and on the fiber cross section. Now, since we are interested in stress we, we will divide it by the composite cross section F c by A c, A c is the entire cross section this entire cross section on which the force F c is acting. So, we write it as F m by A c F f by A c. This can of course, be changed this we can call this force on the composite cross section by the area of the composite cross section is the stress in the composite cross section sigma c. So, sigma c the stress in the composite So, this will equal to now F m by A c does not simplify to anything known. So, I write it as F m F m by A m which will become the stress in the matrix. So, I have to then multiply it by A m by A c. Similarly, I write this as F f by A f into A f by A c. So, sigma now this can be simplified into F m by A m can be written as sigma m and I multiply for this fraction I multiply the numerator and denominator by L to convert them into recognizable volumes. Similarly, F f by A f is sigma f and then I have A f into L by A c into L. 
so sigma m is a stress in a stress in matrix and sigma f is stress in fiber. Now, you can see this can further be converted into what is this quantity say a m l a m is the cross sectional area of the matrix and it is being multiplied by the length of the matrix. So, a m l is the volume of the matrix whereas, a c l is the volume of the composite. So, we are dividing the volume of the matrix by volume of the composite. So, this is nothing but volume fraction of the matrix this is nothing but volume fraction of the matrix plus sigma f and similarly this is nothing but volume fraction of the fiber. So, we finally, get a very very simple and interesting relation that the stress in the composite is just weighted average of the stress in the matrix and stress in the fiber with weighting factors being the volume fraction. And if I use my symbol f for V f, I can write this as sigma m 1 minus f plus sigma f into f. But we are interested in the modulus. So, I write a stress as modulus of composite times a strain in the composite, but a strain in the composite we have seen is strain in the composite a strain in the matrix and a strain in the fiber are all same and is equal to epsilon. So, I write it as epsilon. Similarly, sigma m I write as E m into epsilon 1 minus f plus sigma f as E f into f sorry E f epsilon into f. So, this epsilon of course, cancels out from this equation finally, leading us to a relation identical to the stress that E c is nothing but 1 minus f times E m plus f times E c. Again a rule of mixture or weighted average kind of formula for this modulus also. So, let us look at how how does that modulus look like. So, the composite modulus is 1 minus f times modulus of matrix plus f times the modulus of the fiber. Now, here I am trying to plot uh, with x axis as the fiber volume fraction running from 0 to 1. So, at 0 volume fraction of fiber you have pure matrix and the pure matrix has a modulus E m, E m is the modulus of the matrix. And the pure fiber at volume fraction 1 you have only fiber. So, the pure fiber has a modulus E f and if you plot this, this is nothing but a equation of a straight line running from E m to E f. So, all you get is a straight line joining these two points. So, this is a nice simple relationship and this is based on the iso stress loading when the stress sorry iso strain loading when the strain in the fiber and composite and and the matrix 
are all the same. So, this is the isostrain modulus for the composite. In a typical glass fiber reinforced composite for example, let us say GFRP E m will be very low let us say 1 to 2 giga Pascal. So, this may be 1 giga Pascal whereas, the glass E f has a very high modulus. So, 70 giga Pascal. So, you can see that in this formulation E c let us say for 50 percent for the 50 percent composite E c will become 0.5 E m plus 0.5 E f which will be 35.5 giga Pascals. So, by putting 50 percent by 50 percent of the reinforcing glass fiber, we can raise the stiffness of matrix which was very low from 1 giga Pascal to 35.5 giga Pascal which is a very high value. However, even if we required a high stiffness we do not want the brittleness of the glass. So, composite overall is giving us a better property in the sense that we have a stiffness uh, a very high stiffness which could not have been obtained in plastic, but at the same time we are avoiding the brittleness of glass fiber. There are several glass fibers. So, if any glass fiber in the matrix even if it, it breaks the other glass fiber will still remain intact and the whole thing will not break as a brittle material.